Welcome to the March Dynamics Nav 2009 R2 webcast. This month we're going to be taking a look at searching and filtering. And we are recording the webcast this month, so if you'd like to take a look at it later, you can have a look at it on YouTube or on our website. So let's take a look first at the Roll Taylor client. You've seen this before in previous webcasts. Uh, what we're going to do is to have a look at first at the difference between filtering and searching because they're two distinct terms in the environment. So let's have a look at sales orders. And first of all, you'll notice this says no filters applied. This is one thing you want to watch for. Sometimes you won't see an item in a list that you expect to see. And the reason that the item is not in the list is that you've got a filter applied. So here's sell to customer number. That matches what's in this column. If I wanted to see all the open orders for customer number 10,000, I can just key in 10,000 and it will give me those. This is filtering, filtering a list. Searching, we'll take a look at just a bit later. Let's say that we want to work, uh, we want to filter by the sales order number. We can do that. You see the other items that we can filter by. External document number might be customer PO. And you can see the other items there. Now, you may be asking, well, what if I want to see or search based on two different items? If you see this little button, anytime you see this in Dynamics Nav, it means there's more information or you can expand. You'll notice this up arrow, which is the other side of it, means collapse. If I click this, you'll see it collapses. If I click it again, you see it expands. So when I click this, it actually gives me access to the advanced filtering screen. I can also get to this screen from right here or with Shift F3. All right, so this is the first filter. Let's change this to location code and let's put in red. Now, I want to filter also by let's see what we can filter by customer number. And I'm going to filter by 38128456, which is this customer. OK. So now we have a dual filter, an advanced filter. We're looking at a location code filter and at a customer number filter. When I hit Enter, I see only the orders at the red location for this particular customer. And I can collapse the advanced filter. Notice that it now shows me that I do have a filter applied. And here is the filter that's applied to the sales orders. All right, let's clear that. Look at a couple of ways to clear it. One way is just to delete these items. Another way to clear the filter is to come over here and click Clear Filter. Another way is Control Shift A. So let's clear the filter. Now we'll see all the open sales orders. And let's kind of review briefly. If I want to filter by sell to customer number only, I can type 10,000 and filter by that. If I want to filter by multiple, multiple filters, then I have to expand and I can set multiple filters down here. And I can filter by location code. Obviously, if I figure by, filter by white location code and then hit tab, I get nothing because there's nothing for that customer in the white warehouse. 
I have to go back to the blue warehouse to find my orders for Canon Group. All right, so that's filtering. You have a simple filter where you can filter on one item. You can expand this and do multiple filters. And you can add as many as you want to here. I've never found a limit. There may be one, but not one that I know of. All right, so that's filtering. Now you have filtering on just about any list screen. This is called a list screen. So if I go over here to items, I'll have a filter on the item screen. And again, this works the same way. I want to filter, let's say, on the production bomb number. I'll just pick a field and key, and bam, I see all the products with a production bomb. Um, you can filter on any of these fields. Now, let's suppose I wanted to see unit cost greater than $100. We can try this here, and you'll see that'll work in a single filter. If I expand the advanced filter, you'll see I have to do basically the same thing in the advanced filter. What this is telling me is I had a filter up here, a quick filter, and it had to clear it in order to apply this filter. And you can see I got a $72 one and some others that are bigger than 100, bigger than 50. I can do 100. I can do less than. If you want to know what the options are, just press F1 here or click the help and it will show you what the options means and uh, mean and how to do it. In this case, you do have to search on filtering and you'll get all the filter operators. You can do equals, you can do greater than, you can do not equal, that kind of thing. But this is how you do multiple or advanced filtering. Now, um, let me clear this and let's find something Let's say we want to all vendor 50,000, all right? Vendor 50,000 is service electronics. Let's say that we frequently look at all the parts from vendor number 50,000. So I'm going to add a filter where the vendor number is 50,000. And now I get that. Here are all my parts that are from vendor number 50,000. Now, because I said I use this a lot, I'd like to not have to come back in here and type this in. I'd like to save it. And I can save a filter by coming over here to this will be whatever the screen is we're on. There will be items, sales orders, quotes, whatever. Pulling down the items and do save view as. And then I'm going to say items vendor. 50,000. And now it says, where do you want to save this? I can save it in home, which is this group right here. I can save it in journals. I can save it in administration. I'm going to let it go ahead and save in home. And we'll say, OK. And do I want to restart now? I'm going to say yes. And it will restart. If I go to home, I have items of vendor 50,000. And now, instead of clicking into items and then doing the filter, all I have to do is click this right here, and I get the pre-filtered list. I can still expand and add more filters if I want to. So now I want to go everything where the description is computer. And so now I get only the computers from vendor 50,000. All right, that is filtering, what's called quote unquote filtering. Let's clear this and let's have a look again at sales orders. Let's actually open a sales order. There are a lot of different places where you can search. We're going to have a look at searching on the item number, which is something that people do fairly commonly. Any box that you have this down arrow on, 
you can typically search. So you see there's one on sell to customer. There's not a search on order date, but there is a calendar. You can search on salesperson code. So this down arrow indicates that there's some kind of a search. When I click the down arrow, let's take a look at this screen quickly. You'll notice that there's a little funnel right here. That means that I'm now filtering by this column, the number column. It, I'm, excuse me, I'm now searching by the number column. If I want to search by description, I click. If I want to search by base unit of measure, I click. And you see the little funnel moves. All right. Notice I can't click unit price. All right. Let's suppose that I always want to search by description. So I just click down here, and that sets description as the default filter column, search column. I do have an advanced. In order to do an advanced search, notice when I hit advanced, it took me back to the item list. And now I'm back in searching by item. One thing I'll show you, if I select one and hit OK, it actually enters that item back in. So when you do an advanced search, basically what you're doing is going to the item screen. And whatever you select on the item screen, when you hit OK, is filled in. So now you'll notice I'm searching by description. If I click this new, it's actually telling it, hey, I want to add a new item. So if I have security access to add a new item, it'll allow me to add one on the fly. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize about this is you can just start typing. And it's going to search in whatever column is the default column. And I can click and go back. All right, so filtering is usually done on a list, and it gives you fewer items on the list. Searching is done when I am looking up a particular item. And on the search screen, I can click the different columns in order to search by different columns of information on the system. OK, we usually go for 20 minutes. I'm going to have a look at one other item here that we didn't talk about in the promotion. Let's have a look at, search, at sorting. Um, and for this, I'm going to go back. Let me go back to the item list where you can actually see something. OK, here's the item list. Let's close this up. And notice I've got a sort button here. There can be sorts in different places, but this is a sort button. And I get the option to say, I want to sort by, here's my list of things I can actually sort by. Let's say I want to sort by shelf number. I've got the shelves in there. And they're A to Z now. If I slide over, the shelf number is not showing. So I need to. I'm going to go up here. You can't see this because it's off the screen. So let me like this. I'm going to the customize this page. And I'm going to go to choose columns. What I want to find is the shelf number, which is right there. Let's add it, and let's move it up. OK. Now we've got the shelf number, and I can sort by shelf number. And you can see I get all the blanks at the top, and then I get the shelf number order. Remember things like this that 1, 10, 11 are going to sort together. If you want the ones to sort separately, you want to be A01, so on and so forth. That also occurs in other places. So this is a way to change the sorting um, within the screen. Well, that's about our 20 minutes for the month. Um, you can always email me questions if you want us to deal with different things. We're trying to hold this to under 20 minutes just to give some feel for some of the items that we have. I hear people ask questions about. 
Um, here is all my contact information. If you ever want to email me, give me a call. i uh, be glad to hear from you. And again, this is being recorded, so if you want to listen to it or watch it or share it with somebody else, it will be up on the website in a few days. Thank you for coming. We'll see you next month. By the way, you might want to know, um, next month we're planning to show you a product called Jet Express. It is a basic report writer that comes with Dynamics 2009, Dynamics Nav 2009. Um, the following month we're looking at a document management system and you also get a license for the document management system with Dynamics Nav 2009 R2. There's some other requirements for the document management system, but these are both free new add-ons to the product that have to be downloaded and installed separately, but they are free part of the basic license. And, and typical, they are express or light products, but they have enough functionality to make them interesting to most clients and to actually do something functional uh, with the product. So I look forward to that. We'll take a look at those in April and May, and hopefully Everybody will be back then. Invite your friends. Tell them that we're doing this uh, if they're using Dynamics Nav. And thank you again for coming. Uh, check this out on YouTube or on our website. It should be up there. There are also some of the prior months that we were able to record up on YouTube, and they will be linked to the website if they're not already. Thank you again.